Well, hello, Leeds United fans. Hope you're all good. You're looking forward to the weekend. Leeds United coming up against Cardiff City in a in a win, 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 win. That's what I'm going to say. It's a must win and context applied. Uh, this is because Cardiff are so bad. We're not coming up against the top of the table clash this week. We're not coming up against Sheffield United, Sunderland, West Bromwich Albion, Watford, whatever. We're not coming up against any one of these sides. We are coming up against the worst side statistically in the championship right now. I'm not bothered about what Mr. Farker says in terms of they have Yaku Mater off the bench or whatever he said on Callum Robinson. I couldn't care less. I don't care if they've got these two players. They're nowhere near good enough. And we're going to get into the full depth preview on where Leeds United can absolutely harm this Cardiff side and where this Cardiff City side are in problem street. Um, you know, going into this season. And there are many problems at that club. We're going to delve into that. But before we get started, everybody, smash a like on the video. IPM Group are our sponsors throughout the season. Leeds United fans who do CCTV TV surveillance and security systems. For all of your needs, everybody, they're Leeds United fans based in the community. Check that out. Link in the description below. We have a massive football prizes uh, competition as well, of which tickets are going like hotcakes, everybody. I think it's a £3.75 entry, hospitality tickets, match tickets, player-worn shirts, all in the prize. Get involved in that. We have Patreon episodes as well, and we have a free merch drop. You have three instructions in the description below. Do that, and you will be involved in a lucky dip, everybody. The Patreon, there has been a lucky dip. Jamie Edwards has just won that. Shout out to you, Jamie. And um, obviously, if you go over to the Patreon, we're going to be doing more of those, more exclusive prizes over there. But we are going to be doing a YouTube giveaway myself and back four as well, everybody coming in the next week or so to so get involved. Okay, Cardiff City, um, a lot of which Leeds United can do here and a lot of which I would expect Daniel Farker to be pragmatic. Uh, that word gets lost in translation a lot, I think. Pragmatism for me is defined as varying what you do in respect of the opposition. Having a culmination maybe of different game plans as a manager to alleviate and to put pressure on what we're going up against here. Cardiff City are a poor side. Um, there are many reasons of which Cardiff City can be combated in a one uh, in a one off fixture. A high tempo is something that I want Leeds to utilize tomorrow. I'm a little bit sick this season and I'm seeing stuff in the chat all the time. Connor just back the manager. I'm not nine years old and I have to just sit there with, you know, with with just white, white tinted glasses and say, I'm backing the manager, whatever. I do back the manager. I want him to develop. Of course I do. I think that's a mature approach to take. And for this game in particular, I want Daniel Farker to utilize his squad. And I think this is why um, he's got to develop as a manager. We need to see more in-game management for me. And I felt against Burnley, the tempo was just all off. That second half, I thought there was no tempo. There was nothing when it came to Leeds, just improving the dynamism in the game as well, the fluidity, and just increasing the intensity. Intensity is the key word here. Cardiff City are a slow team, and that is backed by their average age. Against Sunderland and Burnley, their average age this season, there's two games they've played, was 30. Yes, everybody, 30. Leeds are rolling out a much lower average age than that. Um, I think there's a key way Leeds United can hurt them here. And I hope we've been working on this in training. There'll be, you know, we we, we look at the team, the, the, the faces that might be out of this game. I think Joe Ronald's is going to miss this personally. I think two games, two missing um, training sessions this week. I, I know Farker said that they're going to be okay and he expects them to be fit. I think Ronald's going to miss it. If he's not got involved in training once, I know they're going to have late fitness tests, him and... Um, him and Man or Solomon, but I don't expect Rodon to make it. So I expect Ampadu to go centre back. That's what I think is going to happen. Shoot me, but I do also think Joel Peru is going to come in um, for for Man or Solomon, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But the key point of which I need to look at, and we need to look at as a team, and hopefully Leeds United have been looking at this week, is overrunning Cardiff in midfield, starting Joe Rawls and Siopsis in midfield, two 30-year-olds when you've got Colwell at your disposal, a young academy lad. They've got about three or four young academy lads who were excellent in particular in the Southampton game where they won 2-1 last season, which gave Leeds a right opening last season around about April time. They've sort of gone against that and Bullock, the manager who stayed them, you know, stayed them to a good finish last year, has reverted back to dour, negative, boring tactics of which are, are nearly getting him on the sack. There was a report by the Telegraph nearly breaking that he was about to be sacked last week. So there's clearly problems within the, the boardroom uh, sphere. 
there and, and Cardiff City are in, are in a real dour straight and, and that comes on to a different conversation just in a little bit. But dynamism, runners and um, exploiting roles and, and Siopsis is 100% where Leeds United can win this game. A high press, a unit high press, not just Mario Joseph going off by himself and pressing that back line as we saw for his first chance in the game where he should have scored against Burnley. We need a unit press. I want us to suffocate Cardiff City Keep them in their half so they cannot get out. I want to see a more coordinated press from Leeds United. Not just one player doing it, then one player coming back, and then another player doing it, then Leeds sitting off for 20 minutes. That is not a coordinated, high-functioning press. We need to see that a lot more, and that's what I want to see. Listen, when there was the when there was the the, the discussion of, of 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 potentially Colwell coming in and Cardiff, you know, uh, fluctuating when it comes to t- so when it comes to personnel within that um, double pivot just in front of the defence, it was suggested that there was going to be a bit more of a young influence, an academy influence. But Buller has elected to put two experienced midfielders in there in roles and synopsis. That is against what football is about nowadays, and that trickle down effect is happening in the Championship. Pace, athleticism, physicality, tempo. These are all things that are just sort of melting their way into football from the Premier League, that trickle-down effect into the Championship. The Championship isn't of the the Sean Morrisons anymore and the Aidan Flints. It's very much developing into a top, top league when it comes to playing out from the back and utilising all your weapons at your disposal. Um, Cardiff City this season have conceded three set pieces. Now, if Leeds can get this right with an uncoordinated, slow Low in thought at points, and what I mean by that is uh, at points it feels like when you've watched Cardiff, I've watched them twice this season, that they don't seem to be functioning at the highest level. If you can utilise some short corners, if you can utilise some differences in your set pieces, which hopefully we've been actually working on this week with our American company that we're working with to to break down these set pieces, of which we haven't scored from 160 plus so far, this would be the the perfect time for Daniel Farker to whip out a set piece goal. I understand he can't get and whip that ball in and knock it in himself, but Leeds have to have a variety of ways of breaking down teams from a set-piece structure. It can't just be lump the ball into the box, have three different set-piece takers per match and hope for the best. It's got to be developed on. Cardiff City, awful negative football. Um, There is a pressure to attack for for Bullet, uh, the Cardiff City manager. Why? Because this, in my opinion, if Leeds United win, is his last game. There was reports of him being sacked six days ago. This is his last game, the last chance saloon. Is he going to throw some academy players in there to give him that youthful exuberance of which this Cardiff City side is massively, massively, um, you know, sort of not seeing right now. It's all experience. It's slow in transition. It's slow build up. It's direct football. It's minging to watch. So, is he going to throw in some the likes of Caldwell, Reindorf, et cetera, et cetera? Is he going to start doing that? Or is he not going to do that? And is he going to stick to what he knows? Because what I would be doing is mixing that up if I'm bull up, because this is the last chance saloon. Does that make it more dangerous for Leeds? Because you look at that Cardiff side, you look at Bullet, and you think he's desperate right now. Absolutely desperate. Any win in any means possible is the way forward right now. And this could really step up their season. We've got to be careful here because Leeds United have always been the duck to break, really. You know, Leeds swan into town after a side has lost four on the bounce and and, and they win a game. It's always been the case with this club. Um, so hopefully now with the players that we've got on the pitch, um, Leeds, can, Leeds can 100% change that. But we have to commit. Commit to that high press. Absolutely swallow them up. If I'm seeing a dysfunctioning press again at the weekend, it's going to really hurt me because there is a way that you break down this Cardiff City side, of which it doesn't take much, with all respect. In 2024, in 26 league games, Cardiff have lost 17 out of those 26 league games and drawn two. In their last seven, they have lost six, scoring three. So, I mean... What do we? What are we discussing here? Their last fixture was a one 0 loss away at Derby, which was met with a reception, a chorus of boos from the away travelling end. And normally, as we know as Leeds United fans, when the away end turns, that is when it becomes problematic. Um, so for me, there's this certain blueprint in which Leeds win this game. As I've mentioned several times, high press, an aging midfield who don't move the ball forward, who are slow in any form of tempo. 
um, who were slowing build up, slowing everything. Um, uh, a high functioning Leeds United press will just swallow them up, absolutely swallow them up. I'll be putting even even if you know Ampadu's fit and Grev is well, if, if Ampadu and Grev are in midfield, I would definitely be looking at switching Grev up. I would be looking at taking Grev out and putting Tanaka in there. The reason beyond that, behind that, should I say, is a four-one-four-one system in effect is going to press Leeds United high up the pitch. You've got another body in the attacking third to swallow Cardiff City up. That makes complete sense. To to me, you've got a combative midfielder in Tanaka who is box to box, but also has that technical efficiency as well. Put Tanaka in for Grev, stop being so frigging stubborn. However, even if Grev starts this game, I still think Leeds United win the game. 100%. I still think he gets out with, with Grev starting this game. But if we're not sacrificing a defensive midfielder for a more advanced midfielder in a game against a the, the side who are holding up the table, who have conceded 11 goals. When will Mr. Farker ever change up that second double pivot going forward um, in his Leeds United tenure? I don't think he will. I don't think if Grev, if, and he mentioned the other day in his press conference, that is the shape, he's not going to change that up. He is not going to change that up, which irks me a little bit because there's, there's, there's such potential and ceiling with putting another midfielder in there who balances out Ampadu and gets forward a little bit more in transition. I think that works perfectly. Pace on the flanks. I've mentioned that as well. Okay, without El Ghazi and Calamo Dowda on either side for Cardiff City, two wingers who are, who are nigh on 30 years old as well, there isn't going to be the onus on them to track back. They've got Perry NG at the back, who's not had a good start to the campaign whatsoever. And I do believe Leeds United, with the wings of having um, Nonto and uh, look Nonto and, and, and Largi Ramazani on either side, they'll absolutely destroy them. The, it is there for Daniel Farker. Ramazani and Nonto take... Cardiff apart. You are putting Ramazani in against the the, the bottom of the table, um, uh, uh, against the bottom of the table team, bottom of the table fullbacks who've not had the greatest the greatest of starts of the season. The wingers aren't going to track back and be disciplined, in my opinion. When you look at that front four, and especially when you look at the wingers, they're aging again, which seem, Bullet seems to be you know favouring. But you know they are one of the oldest average ages in this division, which is going to help Leeds in terms of overrunning them out wide. We have the quality to be putting on the pitch to really hurt them. Do not put Perot in. I still think if you put Perot in, we win the game. Still think that happens. But if you put Ramazani in and Nonto, you are going to obliterate them. You're going to take their souls away from them. Putting Perot in just means Leeds are a little bit slower in transition when you can hit them with a high press and you can hit them with being pacey on the flanks. What I'd also like to see when Leeds United have been pacey on the flanks is early delivery. Early delivery in the box. That's what Cardiff have been susceptible to this season crossed into the box, believe it or not, which you know, you wouldn't attribute to a Cardiff City side. As I've said, three set pieces conceded. They've only conceded six open play goals. So half of that have been set pieces, which you would have never attributed to a Cardiff City side. But for me, with the likes of those two, with the ball in, get the ball into Matteo Joseph and let's see him run across his man and getting a little bit more food and drink that way. Don't invert the fullbacks again and let's not let's not play this congested football. Let's actually pin their fullbacks all the way back with Furpo. Let's pin their fullback all the way back with, with Jaden Bogle. Utilise them as wingers, but just successfully just put invert your um, centre midfielder who's holding into either the left back or that right back role when those two are pushing up. So we're not vulnerable to any sort of counter attack. We do not want that. Um, and as I've said uh, previously, everybody, this is their last chance saloon. It is their last chance saloon, which means that we could be vulnerable. However, there is no excuses for Daniel Farker. And in context, this is a must win in context. Reason behind that is because this is a horrible Cardiff City side. And if we show some of the same tendencies that we showed last season, which is not picking up maximum points against the bottom six side, that isn't progression and that isn't development for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.